So uh, first, uh, I will uh, shortly uh, share our experience with Phantom uh, for FTK and drone and uh, SDK remote controller. Uh, then explain the uh, configuration of uh, network RTK with uh, Amulet Reach RTK station and uh, necessary uh, network RTK uh, configuration in uh, UGCS for VGI Android application. At the end, uh, time for uh, questions and answers. And uh, we'll see uh, how long it will take. Uh, maybe I will show some basics on UGCS. Uh, functionality uh, simple waypoint uh, road uh, creation and uh, explain uh, actions uh, on, on waypoint so um, we uh, purchased uh, john uh, a couple of months ago and uh, we had previously uh, feedback uh, from our customers that there was there were issues with uh, uh, Phantom RTK SDK controller uh, to connect uh, it with the drone. Uh, unfortunately, we also experienced uh, these issues uh, were delayed uh, our uh, development. Uh, but uh, thanks to our uh, DJI reseller, uh, the issues were uh, resolved. And uh, first, after uh, breaking uh, two sets of uh, drones and uh, remote controllers, uh, we finally got uh, uh, working uh, drone and uh, FDK, SDK controller. Uh, as far as I uh, understood, uh, this was related to some uh, older uh, quantum uh, for FDK drone uh, revision, uh, which was not compatible with the SDK controller. So in case if you uh, are using a, a Phantom 4 RTK for a while already, and if you are going to purchase a SDK controller, uh, we suggest you to consult with your uh, DJI dealer. Um, probably based on some uh, you know, serial numbers, you can uh, check uh, how uh, will, will it will the pairing with a, a new controller uh, uh, go smoothly. So uh, the setup today I will explain. Uh, it uh, involves uh, five uh, parts. Uh, the first is uh, Amlet uh, Reach RTK station, uh, which uh, we will uh, connect uh, using uh, LTE connection to uh, network RTK uh, server. Uh, then we will use UGCS uh, for DGI. Uh, application on the Android to connect to this uh, network RTK server. And uh, then uh, data from uh, UGCS for DJI Android application through the uh, SDK controller will be transferred to uh, the drone. Uh, unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> this time I will not be uh, able to show it all, all live with the drone because uh, we have troubles with a GPS signal near our office and uh, we can't get the connection. But uh, we have prepared uh, uh, today, uh, early morning, uh, all the process uh, outside the uh, city and we have captured some uh, screenshots so to show how the application uh, looks with uh, the drone connected. So uh, now I will uh, show a bit of the hardware for those who maybe are not familiar with it. <clears throat> My colleague will assist uh, showing the so the Amlet station. So um, this is a Phantom for uh, FTK the drone. So this is a, a native uh, remote controller with built-in screen. Uh, as it uh, doesn't support uh, third party uh, applications, so UGCS for DJ uh, application cannot be run on uh, this particular remote controller. Uh, but uh, remember, it uh, relates only to uh, remote controller coming with Phantom 4 FTK version. Uh, for Phantom 4 Pro, uh, the controller looks uh, almost exactly the same, and on that 
uh, you can use UGC as for DJ application. And uh, this is a SDK controller version, which was uh, released by DJ, uh, especially for uh, third party applications like us, which are built on uh, based on DJ uh, mobile SDK. So it uh, looks exactly the same like uh, controllers that you may have with various different accounts. And this is the AMOLED uh, GPS station. So uh, we are using a healthy connection. So it's the same card. Uh, Here's a slide where you can insert the SIM card and uh, I'll show also where you configure the LTE network. To use network uh, uh, DK, uh, we can actually randomly chosen uh, ATK, uh, network ATK service. And uh, in this presentation, it will be your uh, course service where you uh, can create an account, uh, use a network of existing servers, or uh, connect your base station. So uh, here I uh, am logged in uh, using my colleague's login uh, in the your service. So in the dashboard, uh, you can see uh, several casters. Uh, it's a server uh, to which you connect your base and uh, then uh, also which you specify in a mobile application as a RTK server source. So here you can see the IP addresses. Uh, probably uh, to choose uh, the, the right one, you can uh, just check the latency connection between uh, the LTE network you use uh, or, or uh, other internet uh, type of internet connection. So to ensure that the uh, connection is uh, as fast as possible, so choose a fast server with low and lowest latency. Uh, then you need to create a mount port. <coughs> uh, mount point, uh, for mount point, you uh, specify the mount point name and the password. And uh, also you uh, create the Client. And for client, uh, same, uh, we just uh, specify uh, the name and the uh, password. So uh, the mount point is uh, for the station and the uh, client uh, is for uh, application. Uh, once you have uh, set up the course uh, account, uh, you uh, have to configure your uh, ATK station. I'm showing the slides because uh, Android device uh, has to be connected to the AMOLED uh, reach uh, created Wi-Fi. And uh, so uh, I wouldn't be able to share a live sc uh, screen from my tablet uh, using this connection. So uh, you download uh, from uh, Google Play service store uh, reach view application. Uh, start the application, it will require some access to your device. Um, then you uh, connect, uh, when you have uh, are connected to reach uh, Wi-Fi, uh, so you'll be able to establish this connection. First, uh, you have the status. Uh, this uh, particular screen was uh, created inside the building, so uh, the satellite's count is uh, not not large. Next, you set the mobile data. Uh, you just need to en enter the APN for uh, your mobile provider. Once the mobile data uh, is established, next you uh, uh, set up the uh, RTK. Uh, in the RTK settings, you can uh, enable which uh, satellites to use. Uh, we have selected all available and uh, scrolling down the bottom you can uh, <clears throat> specify the coordinate accumulation time that's the time uh, which the base will take to uh, fix its location and uh, the longer time you give the more uh, accurate uh, base station location will be 
so uh, once uh, it's uh, configured, so <coughs> you specify the network ATK server address. That's uh, the uh, one from uh, your course uh, service, specify the port and uh, login and password for the mount port. Once connection uh, is established, uh, so uh, the client uh, will be inactive. Uh, the client will uh, change to active from the browser uh, when you connect uh, application. Uh, first, we uh, try to, to, to ensure that everything is uh, working correctly. We try to set up with the GI pilot application. So in the GI pilot application and FTK settings, you know, specify the network uh, FTK uh, server host port. And uh, here goes the user and password and the mount point. Uh, each time you need to press save, so the connection to be activated. So once you, once you um, press save, connection started to establish. And uh, after some time, you see here the active satellites. And once the uh, satellite's uh, number for uh, drone is uh, reached, uh, 14, so you get its position. And it shows here on upper screen ready to go. With uh, UGCS for the GI application, it's uh, almost the same. So uh, you start the application, open the menu. Uh, from menu, you choose the GI RTK network service settings. And here are also the same uh, uh, settings the server address, server port. Uh, username, password, and the mount point name. And uh, use this checkbox uh, to enable FTK. Once it's done, uh, you test the settings. Press the button test settings. Uh, to test FTK settings, a uh, drone must be uh, connected uh, to the remote, remote controller and uh, the application. Right now, we uh, as the application is uh, still in testing stage, uh, we didn't have the ATK fix uh, here to change, but uh, this will be updated and uh, in the first uh, better test uh, release, uh, you, you should wait for uh, the icon to change to ATK fix. And once it's changed, uh, you can start the flight. So this is evidence and uh, actual flight was performed. So uh, now I'll quickly check questions and answers section to see uh, what I can answer. Oh, it's, it's a question from uh, Phil. How far are you with the integration of the Quantum 4 RTK drone already ready to use? Or there still are uh, is required some uh, integration, uh, as I already said. So um, this uh, the screenshots is from uh, early test uh, Question. We are uh, currently uh, testing the application, fixing some uh, issues. Uh, we expect uh, soon uh, to launch a better version, uh, which uh, will have uh, the uh, support for uh, Quantum 4 ATK. But uh, you, you need to remember that uh, this will work only with the Quantum 4 ATK. This, uh, SDK, a question from Grant, do you have to pay for uh, network FTK uh, access? Uh, it depends on server. Uh, this, par uh, this particular uh, I showed today, uh, so, uh, there is a limited trial period uh, where you can uh, set up one uh, base and uh, one client, uh, but for uh, regular usage, yes, uh, it's a uh, there's some subscription fee. A uh, question from uh, Robbie uh, What is the role of uh, UGCS uh, Android on this configuration? As uh, the support for uh, network uh, NTK services is now integrated uh, in UGCS for DJI application, uh, application transfers uh, this uh, network NTK data uh, to the drone and uh, 
but we expect that uh, this functionality will work with Phantom uh, 4 FDK and uh, Matrix uh, 200 series uh, FDK joint. Question from Grant, does this work with the DJI FDK base station as well? Uh, as far as I know, uh, I know, do not work, but uh, support uh, for uh, DJI DRTK uh, station is also in our roadmap. And as soon as we'll, we will be done with this integration, I will start DJI DRTK integration. Question from when? So just to confirm, there is no way to use UGCS on the normal remote uh, or I assume it's a question related to uh, Phantom uh, 4RTK remote controller with uh, built-in display. No, it is not possible. And uh, as far as we know, uh, there are no third-party applications uh, which can work with this remote controller. Uh, the question from Steve, have you used any other services such as Topcon or Trimble that customers may already own? No, we have not tried them, but we assume they they, they should work uh, the same way. And uh, you will be able to, to test it with a better version. Question from Rolly, is better available on iOS as well? Uh, no, currently only Android application will uh, have support for network.